Hey everybody, my name is Aaron Reed with NurseMastery.com and I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to um, look at an ABG and interpret it, okay? So first, we have our parameters here. This is pH, PaCO2, and bicarb. These are the most important parameters when you're talking about ABGs, okay? So pH, 7.35 to 7.45. That's pretty easy, right? It's very similar to 3535, just like the one above it, okay? So PaCO2 is 35 to 45. Bicarb, 22 to 26, all right? So your two variables here are PaCO2, partial arterial pressure of um, CO2, carbon dioxide in the blood, and bicarbonate, HCO3. All right, so PaCO2, the top one here, or the middle one, is the um, acidic content of the blood, which counterbalances the um, bicarbonate, which is the basic or alkalotic um, portion of the blood. So I'm going to use those two terms interchangeably, basic, alkalotic, acid, acid uh, acidotic, okay? So real quick, we're going to talk about what happens when, when these parameters move around. So when your acid goes up, obviously your pH is going to become more acidic. That's reflected by a decrease in pH below 7.35. Now when your pHCO2 decreases, that's less acid in the system, the reflection on the blood gas pH will be an increase. It's going to become more alkalotic or more basic, okay? So that's an inverse relationship between the PaCO2 and the um, pH, all right? And the opposite is true with bicarb. There's a direct relationship with that, okay? So this is a base, so when it goes up with that arrow like that, you're gonna see an increase in the pH because you're looking at a more alkalotic or basic situation. And the same is true when the bicarb decreases. So if we got a decrease in the bicarb, we're gonna see a decrease, um, so we're gonna see a decrease in the pH as well. It's going to become more basic. I'm sorry, more acidic. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, so that's pretty much basic nursing knowledge. So we're going to move on to this thing just fell out of the fucking wall. As you can see, I've set up four different blood gas results here. Okay, so let's say we're on the floor, we're a nurse, we get these um, ABG results back, and we're gonna look at these, and in quick order, we're gonna be able to tell what exactly is going on. Okay, notice I didn't include the oxygen level. That's uh, for another discussion later on. Right now, we're just gonna deal with what's happening with pH, why, and what are we gonna call it, okay? So the first thing that I like to do is I like to look at the pH and um, ask myself, is this deranged or not? Is this out of whack? And look at the first one here. We're going to say pH of 7.3 is um, out of range. Remember, it's 7.35 to 7.45. So initially, I look at the pH. I say that is out of range, 7.3. That is an acidotic situation, correct? Correct. So now I'm going to look at which parameter is out of range. The first one I'm going to look at, and just for the sake of argument here, I'm going to start with um, the bicarb, 24. Remember, the range is 22 to 26. 24 is not out of range. We can eliminate that as the cause of what's happening. Let's look at our next parameter. Remember, there's only two variables here. CO2 is 50. That's increased. That's, a, that's an acid. There's more acid in the system. It's going to create an acidotic reaction in the pH. So that's the culprit. That's the one that's behaving acidotically. Um, if the CO2 were behaving alkalotically, it would be decreased because it's an acid, less of it in the system. We're looking at an alkalotic situation. However, here we have an acidic pH. We're looking for who's behaving acidically. Bicarb is not. CO2 is. So we are going to call this um, respiratory acidosis, all right, respiratory acidosis, all right, let's go to our next one here, we have a pH of 7.5, that's either alkalotic or acidosis, what do you guys think, yes, correct, Al alkalotic, it's below, it's a, above 7.45, we're going to look at our next parameter and see if it's contributing at all, we have a bicarbonate 24, that's within normal range, so it is not, we're going to eliminate that guy, so let's look at our other variable, 30, now, we have less acid in the system, so it's not behaving acidically, otherwise there would be too much of it. It's behaving alkalotically because there's not enough of it. So we found our culprit. Out of these two individuals, bicarb or, C or CO2, it was the CO2. So what we're going to call this one, um, first we found out what the pH was, so I can write alkalotic, I'm just going to put ALK for short. All right, so I named that portion of it. Now I'm going to name um, what parameters is out of range, um, and it is the uh, CO2, so that is the respiratory parameter. So I'm going to call that respiratory alkalosis. All right, does that make sense to everybody? So we're done with those two. Those are pretty easy. We'll move on to the next one. We have a pH of 7.3. That's an acidotic situation, correct? So I'm going to write acid over here to start off with, 
and then I'm going to look at my two parameters and see which one's behaving acidotically. Now, this CO2 is directly between the two ranges of 35 and 45, so that's not contributing to the situation, okay? We're going to look at our next parameter, and it is bicarb. Bicarb is not within normal limits. It's normally 22 to 26, so when we're decreased, we have less of a base in the solution. Less base equals an acidotic situation. So, of these two uh, individuals, or these two parameters, which one is behaving acidotically? That is correct. It is the bicarb. So, another name for that would be metabolic. So, we have an acidotic situation based on the pH, and it's a metabolic cause because it's the bicarb. So, I'm going to put metabolic acidosis. All right. So, let's look at our last one here. We have um, a pH of 7.5. By this point, you guys, should, you guys should be catching on here. This is an alkalotic situation. So, we're going to look... We're gonna, first, we're going to write down what it is, alkalotic, and then we're going to look at our parameters, these two parameters, and see which one's behaving, um, which one is deranged, which one is acting differently, and uh, in which direction is it acting. So we've got our CO2, which is 40. That is very normal, so we're going to cross that one out, and we're going to circle this one and look at that. What's going on with that one? <clears throat> that is the bicarb, and the bicarb um, normal range is 22 to 26, so there's too much of it there. If there's too much of it, then it's acting basic. It's acting alkalotic. Now, does that jive with this pH? Yes, it's causing that situation, okay? So we have an alkalotic situation based on our pH, so we were able to put the ALK right there, and then we found our parameter that's causing the situation, and uh, that's the bicarb, which we can also call metabolic. So I'm going to put MET for metabolic. So as you can see, we broke down all four situations here with respiratory um, acidosis and, alkal and alkalosis, and then metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. Um, on my next video, we will be looking at... Um, compensated um, and uncompensated respiratory acidosis, alkalosis, and metabolic, and, and uh, so on and so forth. So we're going to take um, these four uh, parameters and either put compensated or uncompensated in front of them. Okay? So that should be a pretty easy next step. Uh, if you like what you see, visit nursemastery.com, like all my stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's good to see you guys again, and um, goodbye.